implementation okay how an ai system could be implemented so the very first question what pops up to anybody's mind is that you know why do we need an ai system like what should be the scope of an ai system or you know how an ai system is going to resolve my current activities my current business processes or so forth so the first thing before you know going to an implementation is always setting up the right context okay understanding that what is the scope of an ai system am i going to use an ai system for a typical uh, you know chatbots or am i going to use it for biometric i'm going to use it as robots or you know a number of other use cases you can think from an ai perspective so defining the scope of ai system that yes i am going to leverage an ai system only for chatbots and automated answers that can you know provide answers to any kind of query to somebody who comes on my website i don't need a manual intervention or i don't need a manual person to you know revert or reply back or so but at the same time if i'm talking about manufacturing firms they may prefer ai robots which can help them to you know procure goods or which can help them to automate certain processes which is just manual right so that could be one of the use other use could be like face recognition systems right now inbuilt face recognition systems which can just scan maybe your face in a complete way and authenticate you as an identity or as a person right that could be again one of the scope where people can be leveraging more and more ai systems or so forth Correct. So there are several use cases across which is present um, and which is being used as well right now. Then, of course, all of you, as you know, chat GPT, uh, perplex, right? Cup perplexity, couple of couple of AI systems and softwares available, which is used for our day to day needs, which is used for our day to day help or so forth. So defining the scope is one of the major concept or one of the major area that we have to keep in mind when implementing an any kind of AI system. So we have to be very precise and we have to be very definite on the same. And then based on that scope, we define the plan, right? We keep the plan that do we have the right sort of resources? Do we have the right sort of budget? Do we have the right source of infrastructure, uh, right? To incorporate an AI system or so forth. So you can conduct and, you know, perform certain reviews. You can go ahead and perform certain interviews, do certain kinds of, you know, simple assessments that what exactly is the need of AI system and up to what extent it could be incorporated, right? So based on that, you can conduct your planning, you can understand the needs of the AI system from them, and then you can define the correct objective for the organization that the objective of implementing an AI system would be so and so, right? To reduce manpower effort, to reduce manual effort, to promote more automation, to leverage tools, to better provide protection to certain devices, uh, so forth, right? You can, you can think of n number of objectives. So that is something which has to be defined very precisely as well. And then uh, since it is relatively new, it is highly recommended to provide crystal clear definitions. I'll give you an example. So let's say somebody who is going to work within AI and it is going to talk about transparency, who is going to talk about fairness, who is going to talk about uh, privacy of the data, who is going to talk about uh, appropriate output, right? Now, these terms look familiar. But it is important that from an AI perspective, what would each of these terms mean and what would each of these terms resemble to a company? So whenever I am implementing an AI system, I have to be very crystal clear with all the terminologies that I'm going to use throughout this AI implementation. Whether it is a functional terminology, whether it's a technical terminology, right? It is important to manage and mention all the respective definitions for a clear understanding of the AI systems. So that will be typically, you know, my first step when it comes to the implementation part, guys. And then uh, definitely the risk assessment part, as you all uh, must be aware on the same, that what exactly are the current risk that an organization, you know, may be facing? Maybe too much dependency on manpower, maybe too much dependency on a particular uh, you know, system or a project 
or a particular stakeholder n number of things you can define from a risk perspective or maybe you want to improvise your operational efficiency right that there are several challenges when it comes to resourcing or so forth but then when i have ai systems and i know what exactly is the activity so uh, if i were to talk about logs or monitoring activity right now it is highly likely that monitoring activities could be automated right you can you can set up an ai system and then monitoring activities logging activities that all could be automated but right now there may be men power hours there may be operational inefficiencies that the companies may be facing correct we don't know or companies may be spending too much effort and time behind operational stuff or activities so one of the major uh, you know risk that the company has would be depending on the operational efficiencies operational skill set as far as the organizations are concerned so you can think of all the risk related to operational risk area okay and then overall definitely operational risk becomes part of the enterprise so operational risk enterprise risk that the organization may be facing in terms of finances in terms of technology in terms of operations right that could all be part of the risk assessments right that you list down the risk register all of this risk perform a risk assessment right and then think of its treatment or planning and definitely when you plan for its treatment or so forth that is all associated with ai that how ai is going to play an important role mitigating those risks okay i'm not concerned here specifically on a non ai solution or so my solution has to be specific to ai systems that ai systems can come up and then they can resolve all of my risk or at least mitigate it up to some extent okay or at least improvise my risk rating or so forth that is primary my concern over here guys okay and one important thing that we always do with ai system is the impact assessment now one thing we have to be careful is the negative impact of ai now let's say you have incorporated certain systems in the company and then those systems are not giving the right output or maybe their output is very periodic it's very biased and due to it you know you are feeding some negative data to its uh, upstream softwares or its to its upstream systems or so forth right we don't know where where would the output of ai be used and then due to it the processes other processes are disrupted there is lot of maintenance costing involved um your organization is not able to understand the ai systems well or they are not trained on that so there are lot of impacts as well for an ai system okay now regularly what we do is we never calculate the impact assessment for ISMS or for you know PIMS or so forth that, i mean we do we do calculate that and we do keep that in mind but that is not like a mandate but here with ai system it becomes a mandate that what exactly are going to be the impact of leveraging an ai system and you keep into consider human behaviors human adoption right and several several areas that ai when we use ai system we have to keep in mind so impact assessment is really important here guys so we have to calculate all the impacts that an organization is going to have by leveraging this ai systems and then we finalize you know the uh, entire structure of risk impact uh, its treatment right and that's how it's it's going to work across we do that finalization on gap assessment becomes an important now not necessary that a typical third step has to be gap assessment right you can do gap assessment along with your scoping correct so if you want to combine scoping and gap assessment at the initial level that is absolutely okay that is not specific that gap assessment has to be stage 3 or stage 4 you can do gap assessment initially as well so gap assessment becomes an important uh, aspect as i mentioned earlier that what exactly are the challenges that the organization is facing what uh, extent of ai controls ai processes is the organization following right now right so with the list of questionnaires and the checklist what we have as a part of iso 4201 we have to conduct a gap assessment for the same document that 
right audit the organization that what exactly is present right now show us the evidences show us the proofs that how have you been incorp i mean how have you been using this etc and then you know we we sum up the gap assessment uh, at this level as well so that will help us with better planning okay that will help us with better planning because if i have done the gap assessment i'll exactly know that as per the guidelines of 42001 right which areas i am compliant with which areas i am non compliant with or i am partially compliant with and then which areas i need to create certain documentation processes completely from scratch as as a complete new uh, you know segment so that that really helps me to plan my um, ai project or ai consulting work whatever i am doing across so that is becoming really important as a as a part of this process and then finally we document it now guys one thing we have to keep in mind that these policies may not exactly be created new okay if there are certain policies like if i am leveraging or integrating ai chatbots in an existing information security software or let's say a soc tool or a grc tool right i may not necessarily need to create a new policy for ai i may involve or i may reversion an existing policy input all the ai associated features that these tools or softwares are going to use and that can work but if i am incorporating a complete new ai system right which is not dependent on any kind of integration then i need a new policy for sure so acceptable use of ai within the companies new ai systems that you are going to bring into or if ai systems are going to be incorporated in existing processes tools etc we have to definitely create or reversion the existing policies procedures um, existing manuals guidelines right that is something that has to be taken care as well and then once everything is designed guys how we have the roles and responsibilities defined for instance for an information security that we have a ciso at the highest hierarchy for information security now here for ai we are going to have a chief artificial intelligence officer okay not that it is completely out and every organization has given a designation of a chief ai officer at the moment but very soon very soon we would be seeing we would be seeing a separate area as a chief ai officer like how you have a ciso okay so in this phase role based of ai consultants who typically have the ai skill set to manage systems to work on the systems uh, work on its implementation work on its support manage them regulate them etc we are going to see a whole set of new you know roles and responsibilities right now we see in conjunction that information security roles are clubbed with ai up to some extent or uh, data privacy data protection roles are clubbed up to some extent with ai or so forth but in near future it is likely that when ai is adopted at a great level within the companies and organization we may see ai as a whole new segment of course it would have correlation with isms and dpos and so forth but we will definitely see a live and a new segment uh, for the same guys so implementation has to be uh, you know done in this manner as well as with all the processes for a software system processes role based or raci matrix you can think of that all has to be implemented and then finally internal auditing of the same internal auditing team would be present uh, we have to document every process resource planning as usual as we do all the regular activities that has to be done we'll have to do stage 1 audit we'll have to do stage 2 audit we'll have to create a uh, remediation plans for all the non conformities that has been identified so all the regular practice that we do as an internal auditor will have to do the same for ai but this will typically target ai systems so the role over here is for an auditor to gain significant knowledge about ai right because you can audit an ai system if you are very familiar and sound with ai systems you understand business processes associated with ai that's when your auditing activities will also become much easier right and that will be the um, up to internal audit extent 
and then lastly as usual it would be the certification and closure that once everything is completed you apply for the certification and then regulatory bodies will inspect the organization will inspect all the policies documents procedures will interview a bit and then uh, depending on the regulatory body or organization can be certified uh, on the same right so these are the seven standard steps that we have to go from an implementation perspective of an AI system guys.